All right, let's talk about coffee, everybody's favorite subject. I'm going to show you how I make coffee. This is pretty much the only way I make coffee. So, uh, I hope to get a, an espresso machine soon, but right now this is what I have. It's a fairly strong coffee, and I'm not trying to be controversial. I just call it Greek coffee. If you want to call it Turkish coffee, that's fine. This isn't a debate about whether it's Greek or Turkish. My general rule is if I add spices to it, then I call it Turkish. And if I don't, then I call it Greek. Simple as that. No need for anybody to get upset or offended. All right. So the reason that I like this kind of coffee is number one, it's a strong coffee, which I prefer stronger coffee. And two, it's extremely cheap. I spend somewhere around $100 a year on coffee and I drink it pretty much every day every day unless I you know haven't gotten around to roasting a little bit more and I ran out but generally one to two cups of coffee every day and I spend about a hundred dollars a year not a month a year now compare that to going to a coffee shop and getting a cup of coffee you could spend a hundred dollars a month easily so how do I do that well I buy the beans green and I roast them myself and I've already shown a video showing how I roast coffee at home it's very simple all you need is basically a pot and a whisk now if you want to do it outside you'll need some kind of a hot plate or a burner of some kind I suggest doing it outside but in either case if you just have a pot and a whisk you can do it you know in your kitchen the beans themselves are very affordable. They're probably on par with uh, which which you'll buy in the store. Um, it's about for five pounds. It's about thirty-five to forty-five dollars with shipping uh, for five pounds, and it's about equal to what you get in the store. But it's a lot higher quality than what you get in the store. Stuff you get in the store is usually been sitting on the shelf for a while. It's already oxidized. It's not fresh, so you're paying about the same sometimes a little bit less sometimes a little bit more if it's a very particular blend or a particular kind of bean but the quality is going to be just order of magnitude higher than what you're going to get in the store and the second reason it's so cheap is because of the small serving size so i use a basic teaspoon that's one teaspoon and that's my my measuring so here's some uh some coffee that I roasted and I'm going to show you that I use one teaspoon per traditional serving so what's a traditional serving well a traditional serving is one of these little demitasse guys there and that's two ounces um, of water. Now I usually do a double and a double is four ounces of water only because two ounces just kind of goes quickly. I tend to like to uh, take my time and, and uh, enjoy the experience so sometimes I'll do the smaller one but usually I'll, I'll do a, a double. So that's two teaspoons, okay? That's one, two. That's it. For one cup of coffee, that's all it takes. So you can see why it takes so long to burn through five pounds of uh, of coffee beans and I don't roast them until I use them so usually I roast every one to three weeks depending on, on um, just how much coffee I'm drinking and I roast it in uh, small batches I do about you know half to uh, three quarters of one of these at a time this is just a basic uh, mason jar a pint I guess 
And so, you know, it takes forever to go through to go through the green coffee. And green coffee does not go bad. Green coffee has an, you know, shelf life of many years if uh, you keep it uh, properly. So what that means is I always have extremely fresh coffee. And, and you you just don't know what you're missing with coffee until you've had coffee that was roasted, you know, within days. The, the smell, the flavors, it's so much more intense than uh, than that oxidized, you know, lack of a better word, garbage that you're getting at the store. So what do you make it in? What's the equipment you need to actually cook, um, to you know, make a cup of coffee? Well, all you need is a grinder that's capable of, of a very fine grind. And when I say fine grind, generally they'll call it, again, not to be controversial, but it's called Turkish grind. So you need something like a ceramic burr grinder uh, that can do a very, very fine Turkish grind. This one is a Porlex, it's a brand, P-O-R-L-E-X. It's made in Japan. I think I paid about $70 for it, and I've had it for five, six years now. I mean, it's it's definitely paid for itself. A little uh, deal here broke off, but it still works fine. And you need some kind of a small pot. So in um, Greek, they call this a uh, briki, and in uh, Turkish, I think it's ibrik. <laughs> Forgive my pronunciation. I speak neither of those languages to any great extent. But this is all you need right there. If you have that, you have a fantastic cup of coffee. And spoiler alert, I'm actually going to show you how to make a cup of coffee like this without even having the pot. So I'll show you how I do it at work. So I make, I make this kind of coffee at work. I don't have a stove and I don't have this pot here. But that's another video. I'll show you how to do that with just this and you know, any source of heat um, whatsoever, even a microwave will work. So let's pop over to the stove and I will show you the process. All right, so now we're at the stove. I have to apologize for the slight camera bobbing and shaking. Um, I have a very, very small kitchen and there's cabinets and a microwave right above the stove. So I have to boom the camera out from the left side overhead. And um, the boom is, you know, somewhere between three and four feet out. So it's, it's just gonna be a little bit shaky. I finally gonna break down and get, um, get a, a different solution for that, but so hopefully this will be a uh, last or one of the last videos where you have to deal with this slight little chucking and jiving of the uh, camera. But be that as it may, let's make some coffee. So before we do this though, I just wanted to show you another um, just type of uh, coffee pot. So this is uh, just a little bit bigger. This one on the right here is a little bit better made. The one on the left is a little bit thinner. They're both copper, but uh, they both work and they're cheap these things are 10 to 20 dollars so um, not cost prohibitive to get into this stuff so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the coffee to the grinder and again i'm going to make the double here so one two and i'm going to grind that up here now 
here's the um, part where you gotta make a decision. So, sugar, how much sugar do you want? Um, I find that if you make this this kind of stronger traditional variation, you you kind of need a little bit, just a little bit of sugar. Otherwise, it, it could be a little bit um, intense if you're not used to that. Um, I kind of bounce around between no coffee and coffee. And uh, it depends if I'm having it kind of as a, as a dessert after a meal. I'll make it a little bit sweeter. But so in the tradition of calling it Greek coffee, there's, there's three main levels. And I apologize to my Greek viewers for what's, what you're about to suffer through. So uh, no sugar is traditionally called. Uh, sketos, and then a middle sweetness, uh, a light sweetness. It's called a metrios, and that's um, usually one one scoop of sugar per per scoop of uh, coffee. And then I can't do the comma. Klikos, 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 klikos. The the comma, comma. Is always uh, a little tricky for me, but that's uh, about a two, two to one ratio for uh, sugar to coffee. So I don't buy the the bagged coffee. Most Greek coffee is made from a bag of, of pre ground coffee, so I, I I don't really know how mine compares in ratio. I do know that I use that one teaspoon of coffee beans, not ground coffee, and I like to do usually one um, teaspoon of sugar, sometimes one and a half. I don't usually do two unless it's more of a dessert coffee. But in this case, I'm going to do, um, we'll just go with uh, one and about a quarter. So one and about a quarter teaspoons to two teaspoons of, of coffee. So now we're going to add the water and then the coffee. I personally like to add a little bit of water before I add the coffee. I find that it helps cut down on the uh, coffee clumping at the bottom. So now we just put our coffee directly in there. Add the rest of the water. Turn the stove on. I turn it to five. My stove goes from from low to high, which is about one to nine. So I put it on five to five and a half. I think five and a half if I'm doing a, a non-traditional, um, like I'm going to add it with milk, I'll do more of a drip coffee strength. So I'll put uh, same amount of coffee, six ounces of water. And there I'll put it on uh, about five and a half just because there's more water to heat up. And it takes roughly five minutes to uh, to get it to uh, to where it's about to boil. So we'll be back in uh, five minutes. Now here's something you have to keep in mind that this style of coffee, the grounds are still in there. So people say, oh, it's like cowboy coffee. Well, not necessarily. Cowboy coffee is usually ground to... Uh, Something like a French, um, sorry, a French press to drip coffee consistency, and you get grinds all over the place that rise up and they get stuck in your teeth if you don't filter them out. So, in this regard, yes, it's like cowboy coffee in that the grounds are in there, but no, because they're not a problem. Because they're so fine, and this is why you need a very, very fine grind, they're gonna sink. And there's going to be like a, like a mud, like a sludge on the bottom. And as long as you don't mix it or agitate it too much, the grinds just stay there. And once you get to the bottom and you see that the grinds are starting to kick up a little bit, then you're just done with your cup of coffee. And you just leave that last little little bit of liquid, the last you know, couple milli, milliliters or so down at the bottom. And uh, the grinds stay in the cup and it's fine. It's really not an issue, so don't be scared that you're going to be drinking grinds. As long as you don't stir it or mix it or kick it around, it's not going to be an issue. 
All right, so it's been about five minutes and I can see already this on the surface, on the edge, um, you're getting some very, very slight bubbling. So when this bubbles over, it's gonna go fast. So you have to, you have to be, be ready, don't, don't, it's not like making tea where you just hear the kettle whistle. Um, if you're not in front of it, you're gonna get a very messy stove. So when this boils over, traditionally, it's anywhere from one to three times that they let it boil, put it back on, boil, put it back on, boil. Um, I actually don't. I find that as soon as it starts to boil, um, the, it starts to get a little bit, bit bitter, I guess. So see right now it's starting to bubble, bubble. And right, well, I was gonna show you, normally I would stop it here, but I'm gonna show you how quickly it goes. Bam, there we go. So that's how quickly it goes. That's why you gotta be, you gotta be paying attention. So that's, that's your finished coffee. So let's, uh, let's go sit down and uh, pour a cup of coffee and enjoy it.